On Tuesday, February 1st, actor, professor, and speaker Ben Stein was invited to speak at Murray State's annual presidential lecture series hosted by SGA. The speech focused on what Ben is grateful for in this country, as well as some problems with the country's current situations. In a press conference before the lecture, the news' own Nick Reside had the opportunity to ask Ben a few questions. Um, my name is Nick Reside. I'm with the Murray State News. Yes, sir. And as a former speechwriter for Nixon, what was it like knowing Tricky Dick? He wasn't Tricky Dick. He was an incredibly wonderful man. He was the nicest guy I ever worked for. He was an absolute stand-up wonderful man. And uh, there's just no, there are just no words to describe the level of my admiration for him. He was a peacemaker. He came from extremely modest origins, worked his way up in uh, government service. Um, he was his, he had the election of 1960 simply stolen right out from under his nose by the daily political machine in Chicago, just baldly stolen right out from under his nose. He declined to, to sue over it because he didn't want to plunge the country into a constitutional crisis. Um, after he became president, uh, he worked uh, mightily to end the war in Vietnam on honorable terms. He created the first uh, Clean Air Act. He proposed and sent up to Congress the first legislation for national health, uh, health care uh, underwritten by the federal government. I know that very well because I wrote the speech that sent it up to Congress. He uh, presented the first plan for a uh, thorough and complete desegregation of America's schools. Uh, when, he was, when he was president, became president January 20th of 69, it was only 15 years after Brown versus Board of Education, and there were still thousands of deep south school districts that were segregated. By the time he left office, there were no segregated school districts, uh, segregated by law in any event. And uh, he made peace, between, helped, helped very much uh, make peace between uh, Israel and Egypt by supporting Israel in the Yom Kippur War and making clear that there would be no such thing as a, war, a victory by war, and they'd have to work it out by negotiation. He had had the first strategic arms treaty with the Soviet Union. Obviously, his biggest foreign policy achievement, opening China, was uh, a, a, an achievement that still reverberates around the world today. In fact, Nixon said, uh, after he opened relations, he said, in the short run, I think this is going to be very good. But in the long run, I think that unleashing the creativity and ability of a billion Chinese is going to change the world forever. And uh, he was a man who was picked on. Uh, belittled, berated, criticized, mocked by the press his whole life. Uh, I never understood why, frankly. I really never understood why, except that uh, this will be clearer to you than it is to, to me, because you're all uh, younger than I am. I think every person in this room just about to maybe he is as old as younger than I am. And, and, uh, the, uh, no, I think you're younger than I am. You're, you're younger than I am. So. And he said, he said and he, uh, I think he was always kind of the weak, child in the schoolyard that the bullies picked on. And people like to pick on him his whole life. And, uh, but he was a peacemaker. And his mother was a Quaker. And I think he was brought up to believe that the highest good that a human being could do was to be a peacemaker. And uh, when, he was, when I was working at the White House, I uh, would have various friends who didn't like Nixon say to me, how can you keep on working for him? And I would always say, I will never turn my back on Richard Nixon, the peacemaker. Sir. Okay, um, do you feel that your film, Expelled, has made an impact in the teaching of intelligent design in universities? Why or why not? I don't think it's made an impact on teaching people who didn't believe that there should be academic freedom about it in the first place. That is, if you're a person who's a committed uh, Darwinist and doesn't think that there should be any question allowed of uh, allowed of whether or not Darwinism is the only explanation for the origins and development of life, I don't think it changed your mind. But I think for people who were uh, puzzled as to why a theory that has so incredibly many holes in it and gaps in it should be treated as the only possible theory, uh, I think those people drew some heart and some inspiration from the movie. What sort of gaps? What do you mean? Uh, one, how did life begin? There's no explanation whatsoever in Darwinian theory for that, none at all. Two, there's no evidence cited by Darwin or any of his successors about evolution between species. There's evolution within species. No ex explanation whatsoever about any kind of uh, change from one species to another. It doesn't even, it's not even mentioned in the origin of species. Third, there's no explanation by Darwin or any of his followers of how the laws of 
physics, thermodynamics, liquid motion, any liquid um, motion, any of those originated. And without those laws, and without those laws holding good and holding true, there could not be any life. There could not be anything but chaos in the universe. So how evolution could explain uh, physical laws is a complete mystery, and none of the people I interviewed for the movie could explain anything about it. And no, none of them could explain how a cell, obviously a very, very tiny entity, could contain 250,000 moving parts that were capable of uh, replication and repair of themselves. How that could have happened by uh, evolution, even over a period of five billion years, was never addressed. I must say, when I started to do that project, I was very skeptical about intelligent design and thought it was just a kind of comical. But uh, after interviewing all the big powers in the uh, Darwinian or Darwinist evolutionary world, none of whom could answer any of these questions even remotely, not even remotely, couldn't even touch them, uh, I became convinced that uh, while intelligent design might not be the answer, uh, people should be allowed to question Darwinism.